Hi, Els here, and in this series of videos we're going to deal with cost, volume, profit analysis. Let's start with the first question, M4-1, comparing a traditional income statement to a contribution margin income statement. As always, we start by reading the question. Orange Inc. manufactures a product which they sell to wholesalers and retailers. They have the following information for 2019. Looking at this chart, it's important to recognize that some of the information is dollars and some is units. The first item is units sold. The next, selling price, and then every number thereafter is all about the costs. Let's keep reading. Assume that the entire inventory manufactured during the year was sold. This is important in future videos when we talk about the difference between absorption costing and variable costing. Required. 1. Prepare a traditional income statement in good form for Orange Inc. for the year ended December 31, 2019. And 2. Prepare a contribution margin income statement for the same period of time. Now, I'm going to do both of these together so that we can do a one-to-one -one comparison between the two statements. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the traditional. As always, Start with the company name. Next, the name of the statement, and then the period of time covered. This is a multiple step income statement because we're actually selling products. So we start with sales revenue. Let's go back to the chart to find out what sales revenue is. Units sold is 3,000. Selling price per unit, 50. 3,000 times 50 is equal to 150,000, the amount of the sales revenue. Next item, cost of goods sold, also called cost of sale. This we need to calculate. As you know, cost of goods sold is always calculated in the same way. Direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, both variable and fixed. We can use this knowledge to do this calculation. Direct materials, $12 per unit. Direct labor, $10 per unit. Variable overhead, production. That's important because only manufacturing costs are included in cost of goods sold. $3 per unit. Variable selling and administrative costs per product, that is a period cost and it's not included in the product costs or cost of goods sold. Total fixed overhead production, this number is a total, therefore we can't use it in our per unit costing. This is all the per unit production costs we have. Total cost, $25 each. Multiply it by the number of units sold. Total variable costs, 75000 now we need to add in the total fixed overhead for production, 24000 Cost of goods sold, 99000 Let's move it to our statement. Deduct the two and you get gross profit, 51000 Now we need to deduct the operating expenses. Variable selling and admin. Going back to the chart, per product, 250 times the 3000 units is equal to $7,500. And Total fixed selling and admin, non-production, which means it's a period cost, 31500 With that information, we can complete the income statement. 7500 fixed selling and admin, 31500 operating income, 12000 We don't have tax information, so we cannot calculate income tax expense and net income, also called profit or net earnings. What is the gross profit margin percentage? Recall that the gross profit margin percentage is calculated as gross profit divided by sales revenue. And the answer is 34%. The gross profit margin percentage is important because it tells the management of the company and the external users exactly how much profit is available to cover operating expenses. It's different than the calculation of profit margin percentage, which would be operating income divided by sales revenue. That's 8%. Don't get the two of them confused. Let's now move on to creating the contribution margin income statement. As always, we start with the company name. Move on to the name of the statement. And then the period of time covered. We start with sales revenue. This is calculated exactly the same as it was for the traditional income statement. 3,000 units times $50 is equal to 150,000. Then we list variable costs. There are two variable costs that we have. We have the variable cost production. We already calculated this. Let's take a look. All the variable costs are direct material, direct labor, variable overhead. The total was $25 times 3,000, so the total production variable costs are 75,000. In addition, we have variable selling and admin costs, 7,500. 
Let's go back to the statement. Variable cost production, 75,000. Variable costs non-production, 7,500. Total variable costs, 82,500. Contribution margin, 67,500. Fixed costs. The fixed overhead production was 24,000. Then the fixed selling and admin non-production was 31,500. Total fixed costs, 55,500. Moving this statement down a bit, operating income, 12,000. We have just created both the traditional income statement and the contribution margin income statement. Let's move on to the next part of the question. What are the differences and similarities between the two statements? Which statement is permitted under financial reporting standards? Or GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. Let's go back to the statements so that we can compare them. The traditional and contribution margin income statements both show a company's revenues, expenses, and operating income for a period of time. Note that the top line, revenues, and the bottom line, operating income, are identical. The difference is in how costs are categorized or grouped together. In the traditional income statement, we use absorption costing, something that will be introduced in a future video. This means that variable and fixed production costs, also called manufacturing costs, are included in the cost of inventory through the cost of goods sold account. Revenues minus all production costs, both variable and fixed, is used to calculate gross profit. Operating expenses are listed next, and they're also a mix of fixed and variable operating costs, such as selling, administration, marketing, and distribution. These are also called non-production or non-manufacturing, or period costs. Gross profit minus operating expenses is equal to operating income. This statement is required for both external reporting and taxation purposes under generally accepted accounting principles. In the contribution margin income statement, we use variable costing. We don't separate costs based on production and non-production. Instead, we separate costs based on fixed or variable categories. This means that revenues less all variable costs, both production and non-production, is equal to the contribution margin. It is called contribution margin because it is the amount that contributes to covering fixed costs. Total fixed costs, both production and non-production, are then deducted from the contribution margin to get operating income. Why are fixed costs separated from variable costs regardless of their functional area in the contribution margin income statement? This is because companies incur these fixed costs regardless of the sales volume. For instance, if zero products were sold, the fixed cost would still be equal to 55500 As a consequence, fixed costs should not be used to make decision about products that are manufactured. By separating out variable costs from fixed costs, management can make better decisions with regards to the strategy of the company moving forward. Therefore, the contribution margin income statement is primarily useful to internal decision makers. It is used for things such as break-even analysis, cost volume profit analysis, and segment performance evaluation. And we'll be using it in a future video to do just that. Thanks so much for watching my videos. I hope to see you in the next one.